how to make proper southern sweet tea like God intended you to drink. You need an old pot on an old stove and you fill it with water. Don't use city water. You don't want all those government chemicals floating around in there. Bring it to a boil, then put your tea bags in. I like six tea bags because I like my tea strong. Now, the brand of tea I use starts with an L, but it ain't got nothing to do with Louisiana. Turn the heat off and let it steep for about 15 minutes. Then you need an old tea pitcher like this one. My mama, God rest her soul, made tea for me when I was a kid, so this pitcher's about as old as I am. Pour your tea in there, and you need an old spoon to stir it with. Put your three-quarters of a cup or a cup of sugar in there. No more than that, because it ain't a dessert drink. It'll end up tasting like tea-flavored Kool-Aid. You'd use any more than that. Stir it up, let the tea dissolve, and then fill it the rest of the way with water. Then stir it up, make sure it's mixed good. Now you need a mason jar. Now you can put your tea in something else if you want to, but just don't taste right unless it's in a mason jar. And once you got that, find you a nice peaceful place to enjoy it. I sincerely believe if everybody in the world did this, they'd get along with each other a lot better. Now this video is part three of a three part series of me making a chess set from scratch. The first video, I made the chess pieces using my rotary axis on my CNC. The second video, I made a storage box to keep those chess pieces in. And this video will be of me making the chess board. I'm going to use Sapelli Mahogany for the base and it will be trimmed with Sapelli as well as Black Limba. And the playing field will be made out of Black Walnut and Maple. Once I get the sapelli cut down into the lengths I want, then I'll do a quick surfacing. Not real deep, just enough to get it flat. And then I'll glue all the pieces together to make a panel. This little trick here I use is to get a good glue line. Can't do it with long pieces, but if you've got a crosscut sled, it works out real nice. Save it's a lot quicker than using a joiner. Now I know you're wondering why I'm rolling the excess glue down. It just makes for easier cleanup. When the glue dries, it's nice and smooth. You ain't got those long lines of dried glue to scrape up. And like you see here, I just got a couple of spots to scrape off where the, the clamps were and I couldn't get to with the roller. Now when I flip it over, it'll be nice and flat and I can let the CNC do the hard part for me. Now I will cross cut slats out of this panel because I'm going to make the chessboard in grain. Yes, the entire thing, the base and all. Why you may ask, I just like in grain, man. I like the way that the, the patterns look. It just adds a little different touch. Now you may think I'm crazy for making the entire thing out of end grain, but there's lots of craziness that's happened in the South and it was born into great historical events. Case in point, back in 1903 in a hill in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, the Wright brothers standing there looking at an airplane. 
History would have you believe that a coin toss was made and Wilbur ended up being the first flyer, but that ain't how it is. I have it on good authority at Orville looked at Wilbur and said, you know what? I double dog dare you to get in that contraption and fly it. Wilbur looked at the airplane, turned and looked at Orville and said, oh yeah, hold my beer. Ladies and gentlemen, history was made. And after a good surfacing to get both sides nice and flat, then I'll run a profile pass to cut the main part of the panel down to the dimensions that I needed it to be. Now off camera, I made the trim that will go around the main panel. I cut them down to slats. This is also in grain. This is a pelly that I'm cutting out here. And this is the black limba that I'll use as trim as well. This is one reason why I like ingrain. You can see there the, the pattern that the ingrain of the black limba makes. Now this part of the process was probably the most long drawn out and tedious part of the whole ordeal where I glued the slats that I cut out from the Sapelli and the Black Limbo to the sides of the, the main base. And like I mentioned earlier, this will end up being the trim on the edges of the, of the chessboard. Once I got all the excess trimmed off, then I would turn the board 90 degrees and glue the other slats to the opposing sides. And I did this for each step, black limba, sapelli, black limba, and then finally sapelli on the outer edge. Once all that was dried, I did a quick surface and smooth everything out. This will end up being the bottom of the chessboard.
Now I intentionally left the main part of the base there in the center a little thicker than the rest of it for this very reason. When I surfaced the bottom side, it was able to lay nice and flat and didn't have all the glued up misaligned edges keeping it from being flat. So once I turn it over, then I'll surface all this down to the finished thickness that I intend the, for the uh, chessboard to be. And then I'll do one final profile pass to make sure everything's nice and square. I intended the edges of the chessboard to be contoured, so I run a molding tool path after that was complete. This is the clearing operation of that molding tool path. And once that was complete, I put my finishing bit in the finishing operation of the molding tool path. Now once the operation was complete to, to cut out the edges, I cut a shallow pocket in the center of it, a little less than a quarter inch deep. And this is how I'll install the playing field, kind of like an inlay into a pocket kind of thing. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second when I cut out the playing field. And I went ahead and sanded these top, the edges right here on the top, because once I put the playing field on, it'll be a little cramped space and I won't be able to sand it very easily. I went ahead and knocked that out before I installed the playing field. Now, as mentioned, the playing field would be made from black walnut and maple. The squares of the playing field will end up being two and a quarter inches square. And unfortunately, I could not find 10 quarter hardwood anywhere, so I had to build up these blanks to the size of two and a quarter inches. And once those panels were made, I actually cut these slats at about two and three sixteenths inches to allow me a little room for surfacing and getting everything nice and square. And then I put all those together and, and then I sorted them in a way where there was a nice pattern on the face.
I want to say we're complete. I just surfaced down one side of the blank and then the opposing side 180 degrees. I didn't bother the other two sides. I surfaced these down to two and a quarter inches, got them perfect. And then I would glue those sides together along with the walnut blanks. So that way I knew that I had two and a quarter inches for that section of the square. Leaving the other opposing sides not surface yet, again, will allow me room to work with to get it surfaced down nice and square once it was complete. And then I would surface down the final sides and get those down to the final two and a quarter inches that I wanted the squares to be. stopped after applying the glue here because I remember I wanted to put some wax paper down on the clamps because you know how it is when the glue dries on the clamps you get those black spots on there and because you're dealing with the ingrain it will soak into the ingrain pretty far so you have to surface it down a good bit to get it all out so I've learned to put wax paper down on the bottom and the top when applying to the clamps so they'll stay nice and clean. And of course, once that's done, I'll do a surfacing on both sides to get it nice and flat. And if you remember, I cut a pocket in the center of the base. I'm going to cut a bevel or a lip out of the, the playing field so that it will sit down in the pocket that I cut in the base. And I cut these these little slots quarter inch deep and then I'll lay the playing field down and cut another quarter inch which will leave me a lip on the top of the playing field. This is that new automatic 
wood injector that the Delta table saws have. Does that make sense now? Now you wouldn't know it from watching this video, but I actually made that playing field a few days before this video was taken. And it sat in my shop and stayed nice and flat the entire time. But for some reason at this moment, when I started to glue it up, it wanted to warp. And I mean warp bad. Like I think it was trying to turn itself into a potato chip. So I hustled and got the glue in there and got it in the in the press as quick as I could to try to keep it from warping too much more. I bought these spongy sanding blocks to sand the contours on the edges of the chessboard. They don't last very long. They wear out pretty quick, but they were good enough for this project and they saved me a lot of headache. I started sanding with 120 on the edges of the base but for the playing field, I started with 80 grit to make sure that I got all the tool marks out. And then I, on the playing field and the base, I worked up to 220, get a nice smooth finish on it. And I made this chest set for my daughter and her husband. So I put a little message on the back for them once I'm able to give it to them. I'll put rubber feet on each corner of the playing board for it to sit on. I'm drilling the holes for that before I seal it. And as always, I'm using tried and true Rubio's. I actually finished this with two coats of Rubio's. After the first coat, I let it dry for a couple of days, and then I come back with some emery cloth on the bottom of my orbital sander, and then put a another coat on there, and it really, really made it pop. I've never noticed a difference putting two coat on the side grain, but it really did did well for the for the end grain. And there you have it, a complete chest set. I had made chess boards before, and like I've mentioned before, I've always wanted to make chess pieces to go along with it, so I can scratch this off my bucket list. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe it. I really appreciate it because it really does help. Y'all take care, and I'll see you next time.